All right. So how do we analyze the magnification of error? So let's use examples to demonstrate that. So instability. <laughs> magnification of small error while stability on the other hand is damping of a small error if you make a small error in a stable scheme no problem after a while this error is going to be damped out and decayed so the error would actually not even accumulate for an unstable scheme, if you make a small error, I'm going to kill you, right? So that's, a, that's, that's the difference between a stable and the unstable scheme. So let's analyze mathematically what scheme is more forgiving, what scheme is not. And we want to use the forgiving schemes. So let's actually figure out to look at this equation and uh, uh, perform the so-called zero stability analysis so zero stability analysis is basically forgetting about this term assuming du dt is equal to zero so i just have a scheme un plus one equal to eight times un minus eight times un minus two plus un minus three okay let's analyze this scheme is stable or not this scheme contains one two three four terms and uh, how can I turn such a scheme into a linear system which we can apply eigenvalue analysis to analyze the stability? That's, that's a question. I'm asking a very specific question because stability analysis, no matter in ODE or PD, is generally related in turning some recursive relationship, which this is a recursive relationship, right, into a linear system. Okay, and uh, uh, basically, if we can, how can we turn this into a linear system? Let's say v n plus one of a vector is equal to a matrix times v n. I mean, if we can turn this into such a linear system, then we can basically analyze the property of the matrix to figure out if the scheme is stable or not. Because then we know this is a actually times a times u of n minus one, right? And because I can apply the same relationship, that's equal to a times a times a times u n minus 2, right? And if I do this again and again, actually I, what I get is a to the n plus 1 times u of 0. So as I, well, sorry, this is v. This is v. All of these are v. So, so basically I'm asking the question, how do you turn this recursive relationship to a matrix recursion so that um, analyzing the stability of the scheme becomes analyzing the stability of a matrix to the certain power which we can do using eigenvalues yes one of the ways is to assume a solution of u e, un equal to x to the power of n that's actually correct but the question is like why can you do that sure that's a that's actually a very hard to understand answer but you are correct <laughs> all right you have a better answer that can be understood by everybody Okay, I think you are trying to expand on his answer, trying to make it easier to understand, but there is a more fundamental answer to that. Do you remember how to how you converted a second order OD into a first order OD? Create a you create a system by introducing some uh, uh, dummy variables. So here, can you do the same? Yeah. Introduce. Call like uh, a n minus 
one uh, like deep. Sure. Let's introduce these dummy variables. Let's call v m plus one into a vector of u m plus one, u n, u n minus one, and u n minus two. How about that? Okay. If you can do that, then my v of n is going to be what? u n, right? u n minus 1, u n minus 2, u n minus 3. Now, what's the relationship between v n and v n plus 1? You got a matrix, right? So let me let me start to write this down. Um, my previous equation is u n plus 1 is equal to 8 u n minus 8 u n minus 2 plus u n minus 3. Now I have my vector which is u n plus 1 u n u n minus 1 u n minus 2 is equal to something times my previous vector u n u n minus 1 u n minus 2 it's just that every index gets shifted by 1. Right? Do you see the relationship between this and the converting a second order OD into a first order OD? We are just uh, introducing more dummy variables and make it a system. Right? I mean, quite general idea. So, somebody help me fill out the matrix system. What's the first row? Yeah, the first row actually corresponds to this equation. Right? So, it's 8 u n plus 1 i mean uh, you should uh, that's one of the exercises in looking in converting between a matrix system and uh, uh like uh, something written down as an equation right at some point you have to be very familiar with that so the first row of the matrix corresponds to one equation and every column corresponds to one of the terms so 8 is multiplied by u n and the next number needs to be multiplied by u n minus 1 which is Zero because this contains no u n minus one. The third one is multiplied by u n minus two, which is minus eight, and the last one, one. Okay, now good. How about the second equation? Yeah, the second equation is u n equal to u n, right? U n is equal to what? It's u n, so it's one zero zero zero. How about the third one? Zero one zero zero. Very good. How about the last one? Zero zero one zero. Very good. So this is my matrix A. It's a constant matrix, and I know that if I keep going, this is actually equal to the matrix A times another copy of the matrix A times what? U n minus one, U n minus two, U n minus three, U n minus four. Right? And I can keep adding copies of A here until. I want to write this as a to the certain power. So let me see what power should I use. Ultimately, my a minus two should be zero. So I need a minus two power times u zero, u one, u two, u three, right? So that's my initial. That's my startup portion of my scheme. All right. Any questions on that? Well, this a to the n minus two power is just the repeated multiplications of the same matrix. What's the behavior of repeated multiplications of the same matrix? It's n minus two because every time I multiply by the matrix, the indices are shifted by one. Right now, when I started the iteration my use I use 0 u1 u2 u3 and uh, I need enough matrices to shift the u n minus 2 all the way to u0 so how many matrices do I need to multiply n minus 2 right all right so basically the stability of this scheme lies on the stability of repeated multiplication of this matrix. So let's construct the matrix back in MATLAB. My stability matrix A, it's actually called stability matrix, is uh, 8, 0, minus 8, 1. And uh, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0. Okay, that's my matrix. 
in MATLAB, I actually do a square, right? And you can see a square actually contains some pretty big entries already. I can do a cube, it's bigger. I can do a to the 128th, it's already 10 to the 114. So that's a good explanation of why we get an unstable scheme.